Okay. Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton making waves when introducing her new $350 billion 10-year college affordability plan. Listen to this. Under the new college compact, no student should have to borrow to pay tuition at a public college or university. Well, the plan aims to reduce the crushing burden of student debt facing so many millennials, but relies on the states agreeing to opt in. Want to bring in civil attorney Christy Kunzig, Catherine Timpf of the National Review, and our own Jolyn Kent for a millennial roundtable discussion. Christy, as someone with student loans, what is your take on Hillary's new college? Program? How much in student loans do you have right now? I graduated with almost 100000 in student loans. Wow. Um, I have about 75000 right now. I've been out of school for a year. Um, I think it sounds great saying that we don't have to pay for student loans, but that money's coming from somewhere. Nothing's actually free. So I don't think raising taxes to pay for our student loans is a good idea. I think we should focus on creating jobs so people can pay for their own student loans. And I'm very fortunate that I found a job after law school. I actually work two jobs. I also host a radio show and I I'm able to pay off my student loans and start saving, and I think that's really what we need to focus on. I think you make a great point. Very, very practical of you. you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Very common sense thinking. What's your take on it? Right. Let's just get the government more and more involved in education. They've been doing such a great job so far, the more they've gotten involved. Obviously, this is going to be transferred somewhere else, and obviously this plan also isn't allowing colleges to increase costs. But it's still going to cost the same. You still have to pay professors. You still have to have these programs. It sounds great, not really practical, and there's always externalities that can be negative. I think that's great. Catherine and Chris, you make all the right points because, Joe, didn't we get here because of this in the first place? Because the government made these loans so attractive that it just hyped up the amount of money that we were borrowing? Well, that's part of it. But the other side of it is colleges, especially private universities and colleges, have raised their prices exponentially yeah. at a rate that has actually been pretty out of control over the past, specifically 20 to 30 years. And if you look at the broader context of where uh, Secretary Clinton's plan lies, if you compare it to the other Democratic candidates, it's actually not as uh, sort of uh, maybe left as you might expect. She's actually calling for refinancing of private loans as well. So you could refinance the high interest rate that you might have on those private loans and change that rate and make it lower. Also calling for colleges to lower their costs as well. So it is sort of a team effort looking at it, but it certainly will cost uh, cost money, no doubt about it. I mean, the, the question becomes, where does the money come from? Something's got to give. Mm-hmm. And so if we're spending this on a government level on college, then what you know, what does that mean as a country for our right. debt? I mean, some people are saying that money will go back into the economy, but not necessarily if you're getting a free degree in French literature studies <laughs> or something like that. That still doesn't mean you're going to be able to get a job. Right. Just wasted money. Yeah, I mean, basically yeah. the plan here is uh, Clinton wants to cap the value of itemized deductions that wealthy families can take on their tax returns as well. So you will have an effect on the other side of the economic spectrum, not just on the students. And it could be a negative impact, right, if you look at the broader economy, depending on what you believe in in terms of wealthy individuals spending in this economy. Now, the idea that college should be free is, is, is just, you know, I mean, for, for people. I mean, it just doesn't make a lot of sense because the money has to come from somewhere. Right. It sounds nice. It's just not practical. Right. Mm-hmm. What would you like to see? I mean, as a, as a millennial facing the debt that you do, what kind of a plan do you think would, would it be? longer maturities, longer to pay it back. I mean, are there things that you would like to see? I think for me, the biggest thing would be having a lower interest rate. Right now, I'm almost at 7% on some of them. I can get a mortgage for almost right. 4%. So so adjustable. Yeah. R- rates that There's are so adjustable. People are paying even more than that, 8.5%, 9%, depending on when you locked in those loan rates. Yeah. And that's really where the supporters of the Clinton plan say, well, if you can refinance those loan rates back down again, maybe that would actually help. But then again, the principle is still so very high, right? Yeah. I like Rand Paul's idea of being able to deduct it from your taxes, your education costs throughout your career. I think that could be something rather than focusing on just giving money oh which uh, by the way you just you actually can't do that well it's funny because you know as a millennial and i don't know if this is a generalization but you look at things a little more skeptically i mean Mm -hmm. you know you might say oh yeah it's free great (laughs) idea but you're actually looking at implications of this absolutely you have to you have to i mean we're not constantly having more and more debt for no reason eventually something's got to give you can't just sit around as campaigning as someone who's campaigning you obviously want to just offer more free things for support especially millennial support 
but where's it going to come from? How's it going to work? And yeah. there's always negative externalities. Uh, especially when you're talking about, what, $350 billion, <laughs> billion. Yeah. Yeah. over 10 years. But you have 8 million people in default right now. That's mm -hmm. extraordinarily yeah, It's high. great, great stats that you have, Joe. Thanks for, for that. All right. From the millennial generation, which candidate is resonating, would you say? I loved Carly Fiorina. I thought she was great. Um, and she's given, and, and it's a story that resonates with people. She was the secretary yes. at Hewlett Packard and, and, and rose to become the CEO of this global mm -hmm. company with hundreds of thousands of employees under her. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now that Hillary is not resonating. <laughs> She's exactly what millennials don't want. Career politician. Everyone knows she lies. Plus, she's not likable. She's boring. I think they're having a real problem with her connecting to younger people, which is probably why she's coming out and doing something like this. Yeah, Democrats yeah. inside, young Democrats are certainly not mobilizing as much no. for Clinton. And, and even, as much as the conservatives may not like her, there is this inside the party unrest about what will actually move voters to the polls, right? And that's really what brought President Obama to victory was young millennials voting. You're absolutely right. They really came out and voted for him. I wonder if the millennial generation will come out and vote for, for example, like a Joe Biden. Yes. People like Joe Biden. He's funny. He's fun to watch on TV. Hillary, Snapchat, hair and pantsuit jokes or not, she's just not cool. Yeah. She's, she's got to cool. work on her Snapchat strategy. <laughs> there you go. Bottom line, just not cool. No. Thank you very much, Catherine. Christy, good to see you both. Joe, we'll see you later on in the yep. program. Thank you, our millennial roundtable. Up